Hi. I didn't actually write that on um, my bio, so it doesn't really make any sense. It's actually kind of old, but it's kind of tough to follow JR, you know. But um, actually, who would want to see JR in Hawaii? I was actually talking to a buddy of mine in LA who's a gallerist out there, and we were talking about trying to get him here. Um, so maybe, maybe, maybe it's possible you're here too. Um, so I'm Jasper. Um, quick disclaimer, I'm not the best speaker. Um, I've done a lot of talks before, but I, for some reason I'm more nervous at this one than the one I did in Australia recently because I think in Australia I leave the country and here I'm kind of here. I'm, you'll probably see me around or something. But um, so I don't really consider myself an activist. I think the work that I've done can be construed as activism, but I never really went into it thinking of it as activism. Um, I think in the beginning, it was just to sort of fill a gap of sorts, you know, to sort of, um, I don't know how many of you here are fresh grads from college, or some of you maybe graduated f with a design degree, or if you have an, or you're sort of trying to figure out what you do with that thing. Um, I graduated from our college with a BFA in illustration, and I was lost after I graduated. Um, they never really tell you what you're supposed to do with it. You know, do I send out a ton of postcards to magazines and hopefully I get hired for illustration jobs? Um, maybe I try to get into art shows, but like how do I make a living doing that? You know, like how like how will I support myself in the long run with an illustration degree? Like do I make children's books now or something? And so that was sort of where I was after college. And I did do all of that. I did send out postcards to galleries. I sent out little books. I tried to get into art shows. I got published in magazines. But it was still, it didn't feel like I was heading in the right direction. So. One day, a couple of my friends and I tried to start a brand. You know, we just try to start a t-shirt brand. Maybe if we start a t-shirt brand, we can get our work out there. Maybe become mainstream, maybe we'll get more work. And the one thing that we also didn't get taught when we were in school is how to get our ideas to physical form. Like how do you, if I wanted to make a shoe, or if I wanted to make a chair, or a bag, or something, like what is the process from my ideas to an, act, an actual physical f object. And so I thought that the best place to figure that out was Hong Kong. So after thinking about it, two months later after having the idea, I packed up and I moved to Hong Kong. And Hong Kong is the gateway to China and, to, and China is sort of where most manufacturing is done. So I moved there to figure it out, to figure out how I could make something in order to maybe start a company to maybe make a living doing art. Um, and when I was out there, I ended up working with guys like Jackie Chan, which was a weird experience. Um, it's actually it wasn't that fun either. Um, and, and I ended up um, working for a magazine out there. I ended up working for Hypebeast for, for a little while. And at the same time, I still wanted to do my art. I still wanted to do art shows and stuff. And there wasn't, like, at that time, and it still is now, Hong Kong is a, it's a finance-based city. It was a city built on trade. And so the art scene out there is sort of based around the same, the same foundations. So most of the art, or most of the galleries there, wouldn't show my art. And the main reason why they wouldn't show my art is because I was American. Um, out there, there's a huge mainland Chinese buying trend. So then if you buy mainland Chinese art, then it's a better investment. Um, and so whenever I went to a gallery to show my work, it was, they always told me that I had no potential because I was American. I'm Chinese, but then it didn't matter. Maybe I, I changed my name to something that sounded more Chinese or something, I don't know, but it didn't, no one wanted to show me. And so, the dilemma happened to where I could either stop doing, like stop trying to show my work in galleries in Hong Kong, 
or I could start my own gallery and see what, what could happen if I just showed my own work in my own space. And so I walked around and I walked from where the gallery district out to like maybe the outskirts of the city. And I ended up at a sign um, that was an old restaurant that wasn't, that hasn't been open for maybe like 10 years. It was just a vacant restaurant. So I called, so we called the number and we asked them how much it would cost to rent it. Um, and they told us and we thought that it was doable, that we could survive paying that rent a month and maybe I could turn it to my studio so it made more sense. And maybe two months after, after signing the lease for that, we uh, opened up Above Second, which is, we called it Above Second because it was Above Second Street um, in Sai Ying Poon. And we thought that since it was in the boondocks, then maybe if the address was the name of the gallery, then people would find it easier. So, um, I gotta find that slide. This one? Oh, wrong way. Oh there, that's my thing. Oh there, above second. And it was a little gallery on the top of a hill um, in Sai Ying Poon. And it's actually a real pain in the ass to get there. Um, you have to take the train, and then either you can take the tram, like two stops, and then walk up a hill for like 10 minutes. Or you can just walk from the station for like 20 minutes. It kind of sucked to get there. Like, we were worried that no one would even show up just because it was like out in the middle of nowhere. But people showed up, you know? And I think people showed up because we were doing something different than what other galleries were doing. And so we started showing work and what it became was, I had a gallery now, what was I gonna do with it? So I ended up just showing work from my friends. So we just did different shows. And this is the show that we did. This is the space where it was, an old little restaurant. Like all we did was, when we got the space, we just turned it into a big white cube and um, we Poured, we poured some concrete on the floor, and voila, gallery. So these are some of the shows that we did out there. We would, bring in, we would fly down artists, and we would also show local artists. And at that time, um, there was maybe three or four galleries doing the same thing, that were showing emerging local artists as well as bringing international artists showing maybe new contemporary work, um, maybe street art. And so, all, actually, during the time I was there, doing that gallery, all of them shut down except for us. And we're still the only ones left now. Oh, I should go back one. I'm going too fast. Um, and so I was doing that in Hong Kong. And we did the first powwow there. I don't know if you guys heard of powwow. It's all the murals you see in Kakako. Um, so we did the first powwow. And one of my friends comes up to, from Hawaii to Hong Kong to visit and see it, and see the show. And uh, she, uh, her name is Krista, Krista Whitmire. And um, she asked me to do one in, in Hawaii. And at that time, I was kind of like unsure of doing that. I was wanting to do it maybe in Berlin, maybe in Singapore, maybe in Shanghai or Beijing. But then she really pushed it for Hawaii. And I'm from Hawaii. I went to Kalani High School and um, I left Hawaii because I didn't feel like it was a place for me as an artist to grow or to start a career doing art. So I left, and I left for a long time. Um, I lived in San Francisco for six years. I lived in Portland, I lived in Japan, I lived in Hong Kong. Um, and then she said, you got to do it. So I'm like, okay, so why don't we try? So I came back, and at the same time, Tiffany Tanaka, who owns this space, um, and I, she asked me if I wanted to partner up with her to help her build this space. And so I come back and we start Loft in Space, which is where we are now. And so, um, so we start doing art shows here. Um, and we start working with people out here, like it's been blood, sweat and tears working and trying to make this space happen. And we're still trying to figure out now, we're still trying to find our footing and where are you gonna take it? And guys like Leland, who's our manager, and people that we work with like, like Jeffrey Grass and different people, 
Like, there's times when I'm, you can find me sleeping back here, and one time I was trying to paint the wall outside for a new art, for a new mural, and I fell asleep on the scaffolding. I think Prime was there. Um, so, yeah, this place. <laughs> so we started doing shows here, and I thought, same thing, like, why, if I have a space here, why don't we just, um, why don't we just show friends and do different kinds of art? So we bring in guys like Aaron De La Cruz and we turn, um, we build a little room for him. That's his childhood bedroom, which ended up turning into the stage. So that was that. Um, we bring in Crank from New York. And that's sort of what's at that far corner there. Um, we build this giant 16 foot sculpture um, in the middle of the gallery which was something that I probably would never, ever do again. Um, I was hellish. Yeah. And that thing. Which, like, people liked that people didn't like, but, you know, it was, it was interesting. It was different. And I ended up ruining a lot of stuff. And then we bring in people like Patrick Martinez, who actually got um, chosen as one of the top artists to look out for by Complex Magazine. And um, Tiff and I brought out Johnny Cupcakes here, and they had a line that went out until like 5 a.m. Um, people were standing in line to meet him and buy stuff from him. And then there's Pow Wow Hawaii. So Pow Wow Hawaii is sort of, like, I'm really attached to this, I think, like more than anything right now. Um, it's taken a lot out of me. And, but it's also like helped me a lot too. Like it's, 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 it gave me a lot at the same time. Um, Pawa Hawaii started first in Hong Kong and then Krista convinced me to do it in Hawaii. And at that time I came back in November to do it and we wanted to do it in February. And we had maybe three months to put it together. And Krista was trying to convince me to move it back but I said if we keep moving it back, we're never gonna do it. And so we kept it in February and we had three months to put it together. And, um, and so at that time, we convinced some people to sponsor us. Um, they were going to put in money. And as time came closer to it, um, they dropped out of it. They decided that it was too risky for them to put money into it. And because art has never been seen as a, as a great vehicle for, for promotion. And so it became a choice of either ending it, maybe doing it half-ass, or maybe, or maybe like not doing it at all you know, uh, or just going all in. And so I decided that there was no other option but to go all in. And I took out my credit card and I started buying stuff. I started buying flights from Canada. I started buying flights from Australia. I completely like destroyed my credit card pretty much. Um, I didn't even have that money. It took me like a long time to pay it back afterwards. Um, but we made the first Powell Hawaii happen, you know. Um, we brought in like 20 something artists and we all just painted together. There was no business plan. There was no way to make a profit or anything. There was no way for me to recoup that cost. It was just, man, just, just do it, just do it. And so the first power was in Hong Kong and this was the one in Hong Kong. That's me in the pink um, skin tight outfit. Um, verbal and you from Japan. And this is the one last year in Hawaii. And so we brought in all these guys. Most of them are friends or buddies that I knew from traveling, from doing art shows everywhere. You know, guys from Canada, guys from Australia, guys from France. And we just painted for a week. And it was great. It was amazing. It was, um, it was unbelievable. And I remember it, when it ended, I was told myself that I would never do it again because it was too much. But then maybe a week after it ended, we start to plan the one that we just did this past February. And this is it, this is the one for past. So we, we brought in, this last one had maybe around 50 artists. So it started with about five artists in Hong Kong and ended up being around 50. And we got a lot of walls with the help of different people that I work with, with the help of commitment schools and the help of a lot of our partnering organizations like 808 Urban, and UH and all these other people just helping us out. We painted all of Kaka'ako in a week with 50 people.
and people were even shaving um, our logo onto their heads and stuff, which was crazy. You know, people like Roger Gassman showed up. Um, he's, uh, he's the um, writer of History of American Graffiti, and he co-curated the MoCA Art and Street Show in LA. Um, and then we decided that we needed to add another element to it. We needed to sort of give back. And so we taught kids for three days, and that was in a partnership with Aid Urban. Um, Prime is speaking later this evening, so he can talk more about that. But we're doing a year-round course now. And we did a talk at UH, a panel discussion, and these are some of the murals that we did all around. You can see it, it's right, it's right outside here. Like You can just walk down a few blocks and you'll see all this stuff. This is the one right outside. This was actually really controversial. We're getting a lot of crap for this one because there's a pineapple doing a Hawaiian guy over there in the corner. Um, but, and then we did this big aloha too. Um, yeah, so we did that. And then powwow, and now we're planning next year. We're trying to make it better, um, bringing in more people, bringing in a wider array. Of, we're doing more talks. We're doing the year-round um, art school. And now, and from doing this powwow, it, it's led us to, um, we're recently right now about to sign a lease um, for a new warehouse space about two blocks from here um, that we're going to turn into artist studios and facilities. And we're working with Edward Urban again and working with uh, Maui Arts Group and we're working with a lot of different people. And we're going to have a space where we can teach kids and where artists can work there and where they can have a place to come, to come together. And we're trying to build a skate park in the neighborhood and everything. So. Um, yeah, so that's sort of what we do, um, or in, well, yeah, what I've been involved in ever since I came back to Hawaii about a year ago. And so um, that's, I guess, art as activism, I guess. I guess, bringing it back to activism, I guess an important part, I think, for artists from Hawaii is that you find a way to come back to Hawaii to give back. Um, I know a lot of us leave. I know a ton of guys are still gone. I still stay in touch with a lot of guys that are like in LA, New York, wherever they are from Hawaii. And, and I think it's important for all of us to sort of just, um, just return to Hawaii and, and uh, try to give back from what we learned from traveling and from, and from doing all this kind of stuff. So um, yeah, that's about it, I think. So yeah, artists. Thank you.